All right, go ahead and start off with passing. One person's gonna be doing passes. So you pass left to right. That's the key part of this drill. We're warming up with passing, but you must do a pass on the left side and you must do a pass on the right side. Any questions? All right, go ahead, get to it, guys. Hello. 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 You got a farmer's, farmer's tan bicep over here. Yeah. No, no, let it relax. You don't got to show off. Just, no show, just put it in its natural environment. Look how short this thing is. It's like a little deltoid shirt. It's like a, sh a gradient of like red to like freckle to just pure white to just like more white. Yeah, I used to ride bicycles a lot when I was a kid. What does that have? That's why I got farmer's tan because I was always like this outside. Like you, hours you every your single day. Has persisted since childhood? Can you look like you have a quest? Quest? You have a quest hey, I'm still talking about my bicycle get story. Get I got one for my 13th I have a birthday. Go, good. go get me a cup of water to put in my hair to fix this situation. I, I can't. We I can't do the promotion it looking like this. Connor is making me promote him to black belt. Everyone knows he's forcing me to do this. No, it's it's long overdue. Me and Connor have talked about this because we have a different type of relationship because I've known Connor since he was a blue belt. And in, in jujitsu years, that's like a decade. So I've, I've known him for such a long time. We've lived together, we've worked together, we've traveled the world together. He's like my little brother. And uh, I'm gonna treat him as such. He came to Autos when I was there, when he was a blue belt. And I think he's actually said that he, I, he originally saw that I went there and then he ended up there as well. And now he's ended up here at Legion. So it's, it's a beautiful story. And he's long overdue. If anyone has ever seen him compete, they know he's like, High, high level, highest, highest level, and who knows how long he's been a brown belt? Like seven, eight One, years? years? It's been a long time, like seven, eight years easily. Um, so, if we're, I, hang on, can I ask a question? If, yeah. If I take that mic and I go over and ask him, is he gonna confirm eight years? So, you know, I mean, in Jiu Jitsu, we do the same thing every day. It could be eight years, it could be eight months. I've lost all account of time. and. So just stop asking me the question if you want accurate answers. I'm gonna do my best, but it all just blends together. So I don't ask the question, you know. <laughs> so the power went out. I blame Scott. Scott actually installed these lights. You remember? You installed these lights, and we got music. I mean, hey, I'll. This is why you don't work here anymore. This is what happened. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Scott was honestly one of our best employees when he was here, but he moved to TJ and has taken up alternative means of income. We don't know what they are. Why are you doing this? And that wasn't a fat joke, by the way. It was a joke of like people asking how much you weigh before or after you get whooped.
What's up guys, this is Darren Connor DeAngelis, otherwise known as DC. My pressure passing course is now available on Jiu Jitsu X. In this pressure passing course, you'll be learning three of the most effective pressure passes in Jiu Jitsu. For one, the over under pass, which is commonly used. And for two, the over over pass, which I developed. And it's kind of a pair to the over under pass, but it's even more effective and it doesn't allow your opponent to press in your face and destroy your pretty face. The third pass that you'll be learning is the side smash pass, which really immobilizes the pelvis and really forces that spine into in range rotation, allowing you to completely control your opponent, allows you to easily pass around your opponent's guard. This course is for anyone who wants to understand deeper into pressure passing, whether it be a professional or a beginner. I think you guys will really like it. Check it out. Where'd Chance go? Did he leave? Oh, you're behind me. Oh, so silent. All right, everyone, another good class today. There's a big turnout here, and I'm seeing a lot of former white belts like Albert and Easton, different people in the blue belt line that are kind of moving up. White belts are moving up. Sunshine got his brown belt. There's just like a general like forward ascension going on here for most people. As you're consistent, that's what you're rewarded with. And for some of you blue belts back there, guys like Austin, Mike, brown belts, there's gonna be a day where those guys are brown belts, you know, and they're gonna be the guys giving you the tough rounds. And me and Andres have been through the whole series of belts, trained with every sort of belt. We've seen the world's best white belt. We've seen the world. Do you remember the world's best white belt, Adrian? Yes, oh yes. Yeah, like it was so obvious he was the world's best white belt but no one would ever really know. He may have never even competed, but he was just like, had that level of talent that we were like, wow, this guy's really good. And so you'll see those people that can clearly give you tough rounds, guys like Tony, um, who even though their belt doesn't necessarily reflect how tough they are in a round, it still reflects their knowledge base, you know? Like people who are blue belts, they're beginners still. You can be super talented and be a blue belt. But one day, those blue belts are gonna be moving up the ranks and you'll have been there the whole way. So it was like this for me and Connor. I met Connor in 2013 or 2014, I think he moved out here, something like that. And he was a blue belt. So I met Connor as a blue belt. This was like seven years ago. I had just got my black belt. Um, and since then, like we've literally trained together almost every day except this previous year. But me, Connor, Andres, we were all training every single day. And when you have that level of consistency when you're training with another person, you develop more than just, you know, training partner friendship. I consider Connor a brother to me, same with Andres and any of the guys that I've trained with for an extensive amount of years. It's just impossible to sweat that much, to suffer that much with someone and not feel a sense of camaraderie that is beyond just training partner. And I think many of you will experience that relationship of like, almost like an apprenticeship type thing, except it's, it's very two way. You get a lot out of giving a lot from training with someone like that over the years. And Connor came to train in California at Autos with us. <clears throat> and he was instantly that person. We saw that he was that blue belt that was the world's best blue belt. It was like, this guy has that level of talent. He has that level of commitment and drive. And since that day he stepped on the mats, he's never really stepped off aside from injuries, aside from various like life things that you can't avoid. Um, but we've traveled the world together. We went on that trip around Europe. We've lived together. We've worked together. We've gotten in arguments, disagreements, many disagreements to this day. He's led multiple mutinies against me <laughs> that were successfully shut down. Um, and I do consider you like a little brother, Connor, and I really appreciate you coming out and making the big move to Legion with us. It was a big step for you. And I think Connor has been kind of on this, the, the journey of jujitsu, the black belt journey since he began. And you can see the people who are on that path because they never sway from it. It's like, that's what they call the path of the samurai. It's like you, de you just never sway from the path of self-improvement, self-betterment, identifying your weaknesses, addressing them and assessing your strengths and encouraging those. And so there's people in here who I would like to see that same level of drive and commitment who have that level of talent like Judo. Judo is one of these guys who I beat on daily. And that's like part of it, you know? He's gonna have to get his ass kicked by me for seven years from now, every single day. And one day you'll get your black belt too, Juno. But today I wanna to promote Connor to black belt. He's gonna lose that one.
honor, my pleasure. Give you a black belt. Go ahead and stand here. I want to say a few more things. So for any of you that have seen Connor compete, he's been a black belt for many years at this point. There are certain people that it's like, they're already a black belt. Everyone knows it. You roll with him. He's obviously like in the top 20 in the world in the gi. Like that much is apparent if you've trained with the top 20 or fought the number one, number two, number three, like I have. I know that Connor has that level of ability to reach the absolute peak of jujitsu skill and talent. And it's not just his aptitude, his, his level of just innate jujitsu prowess. It's his, his ability to just persevere. And I, I mean, I say this repeatedly about Miha and Sloan, and, but that, it, that is the number one factor of becoming a black belt and achieving something great, not just in jujitsu, but in your life is just how consistent can you be? And I've seen Connor go through periods of time where he didn't know what to focus on. So he just focused just purely like in the essence of its being, like he just only thought about jujitsu. And then I've seen times where he's had to pick up other skills. Oh, oh. <laughs> all right. I'll just, I'll just speak in the darkness here. It had to happen today. All right, all right, I'm gonna keep going. So listen up, listen up, we're not done here. So, yeah, this is, a, this is special, very special. So I've seen Connor go through that same kind of cyclical pattern of like seeing a, a barrier that he has to surpass somehow. And even if he doesn't know how to accomplish it, he goes about it the only way he knows how, which is just pure determination. And if you give him a book to read, he'll read it front to back. If you give him some sort of course to take, he'll do it. And he won't listen to what you say if you tell him, hey, do it like this. But if you present him the information, he will absorb it and then put his own spin and his own perspective on it. But he's always been the type of person that wants to do things his way. And I respect that because I'm the same type of person. So as much as I like to tell Connor how he can do these things or how I did it and how he should do it, Really, when it comes down to it, it's his journey. This is powerful. It's like you're trying, know, yeah. It. This it's is coming into me, the black belt power. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it's your own personal journey, and you have to have the confidence and self-discipline to trust your gut and trust what you believe is right. And I think Connor does that better than anyone, just trusting in himself, even when he's wrong. But that's what it's about. You know, you, you, you have to take your own path. You can't tell other people how to, you can't let other people tell you how to live your life. And Connor is exceptional at that. And Connor, it's my pleasure and honor to give you the black belt. My third. Yeah. <clears throat> and would you like to say a few words? Sure, sure. Take it away. Um, well, thank you all so much for being here. And thank you, everyone who's trained with me. This black belt really isn't even a, a testament of my ability. It's an accumulation of all the techniques and all the, the time that other people have put into me. And I'd like to say just a few things about my previous professors as well. Not that Keenan isn't a huge professor and huge mentor to me, like he really is. But the previous professors that I had as well, I've trained at both Alliance and Atos, two huge names. I trained at with Rafael Hosindo, who really taught me how to treat people equally and never think that you're above someone else. And then I trained with Andre Garval, who really just an incredible competitor. As you guys have seen his results, he's really just amazing. And his ability to live in the moment really inspired me to learn how to live in the moment as well. And I think those are two really important lessons. And I would say the last lesson from Keenan, one of the main lessons and the lesson that I have the, the hardest time to really understand is not to forget the forest for the trees or otherwise not get so tunnel visioned into one thing and not ever look at the, the big picture. And Keenan helps me constantly look at the big picture, not just stay so focused on jiu-jitsu. He's, he's actually really taught me that life isn't just about jiu-jitsu. There's so many other things. And oftentimes, just like he says, I, I forget that. And it's, it's really just amazing to be here. And thank you, of course, always to my family and all my friends and everyone. This is really just a huge symbol and it feels really good. Thank you all so much. Oh, okay. A little on the spot, but uh, um, I've trained with Connor since he was a blue belt, and this is uh, 
He's a prime example of how you can learn from lower belts. He's a black belt now. But I remember just in his blue belt days learning so much from him, just his pressure passing. And just I remember uh, one of the early along we were just drilling together. And um, just even back then, I learned so much from you. So it just really shows, guys, you can learn from everybody, especially when someone has that passion and drive. And Connor is a prime example of that. So it's just it's an honor to just be training beside you all these years. Us. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, good job. All right, everyone. So another black belt joins the ranks. We're 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 at one black belt a week right now. So by next year, we'll have quite a, a posse up here. Um, and you guys see it. Like we're we're progressing at an alarming rate. Everyone who's sticking around and training consistently, your your time will come. So great job. I won't keep you here any longer. Let's bow it out. Us. Pop it out. Yeah.